Good morning. Happy Tuesday morning. I want to welcome everybody to the Highway Plan Reading course. This is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and I am so pleased to be partnering with my colleague, Brett Shear from the ODOT Office of Real Estate to bring you this very important training course. Um, this is a two-part series, so we have a couple housekeeping items. Um, wanted to mention because it's a two-part series in the handout section of the GoToWebinar box, I have included the announcement for the course because if you haven't yet signed up for Thursday's um, session and you want to get full credit, make sure that you do sign up for Thursday as well. And then also in the handout box is a PDF copy of the slides from today's presentation. So if for some reason your computer doesn't allow you to download those, I'll be sending that document out in an email to everybody who registered later after the webinar is complete. But um, if you are able to download it and you'd like to have a copy, please feel free to go ahead and download it. Um, we do have some poll questions we'll be running for you guys today. The answers are not in that PDF, so don't feel like you got to get in there and look ahead. You're not going to find the answers to the questions. Um, but I do have a question box. If you have questions about the material that's being presented, um, we'll be stopping periodically this morning and Brett will be asking me for whatever questions you have. So please look for the question box right now in your GoToWebinar panel. And if you wouldn't mind, just drop me a hi or hello in there so I know that you found it. Um, I appreciate that. That way I know that you know we you know where it is you need to go in order to put questions in. So other than the fact that we are recording this to make available um, later through our YouTube site, I believe that's all my housekeeping items. So Brett, are you ready? I'm ready, Victoria, you hear me okay? I can, all yours. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much, did a great job. I appreciate the intro. Hello, everybody. I um, hope you guys are having a wonderful day and looking forward to the class today. I'll do my best to get through this in an hour. This is my first run, I've done a dry run, but. Um, timing we'll see how it all works out um, appreciate you taking the time to watch this video so for those of you many of you on here i know know who i am but many do not my, my name is brett Shear with the office of real estate um, i've been with the ohio department of transportation almost 32 years now um, most of my career has been in either plan development or and or plan review policy and procedure more particularly related to right away plan development but um, i have many years of experience in um, in developing construction plans and I have taught this class or a version of this class for a better part of my career so I'd say close to 20 years so this is a professional because I know obviously we can't see each other unfortunately um, but the fortunate part is is we have a lot of participants in this class so we're reaching a lot more people which is great um, but this is who I am it's my professional pr picture um, prior to the the pandemic that we've had and this is a picture of me since the pandemic so some things have changed on my end in the way i look and appear for those of you that know me i thought you might get a little chuckle out of that um, hopefully everybody did just kind of lighten the mood before we get started here guys um, so with that we're gonna move on um, so if you are interested um, before i get into the slides and the PowerPoint presentation. I do on our website, on ODOT's um, Office of Real Estate website, there is a plan reading manual download. So you can actually download a manual that goes along with the plans that I'm gonna be hitting today. I'm not gonna hit all of them, obviously I don't have that kind of time, but the construction, full set of construction plans and right-of-way plans are available for download in a PDF format for you and you can print them up in a quarter size if you'd like um, for easier readability if you're bored <laughs> um, or most importantly just reference material so this is the website link to that um, and this is our first sheet that I'm going to cover it is called the construction title sheet and one of the things I want to make sure everybody is familiar or aware at the top of each of the slides I have put the sheet number so if you do print up the plans and you want to reference the slides, um, you I have made reference to the sheets specifically that relate to the plans themselves. So we're on sheet one, obviously, construction plans. Um, right now, I want to cover what's called our county route and section. Um, it's one of our project identifications. 
for those of you that are not familiar, there's 88 counties in the state of Ohio, and the first part of our county, or our abbreviation or project name is county, which is W-A-R for Warren County. Of the county, 88 counties, about 79, I believe it is, plus or minus, it's the first three letters. Um, there's eight or nine of the counties that it's a combination of different letters, but in general, most of it is in the first three letters of each county. The second part of our county route and section is the route number, which would be the state route and or the interstate route, or if it's a local project, it would reference a county route. So it may have a number and then CR after it for county route, township route, or it may even actually be a street name. It doesn't happen often, but it does. We do have those. And then the last part is called the straight line mileage. Some people call it the section number, but basically what that refers to is, is um, 21.05 miles is where the project is from the South County line. So if you're driving, hit the South County line and drive North, you would go 21.05 miles and that's where the project's at. Or if you were on an East, uh, east to west or west to east running road, um, the straight line mileage starts at 0, 0.0 on the west side of the county and proceeds to the east. Therefore, in this case, we would be 21.05 miles from the west county line. Um, so again, each county, um, when you enter it um, on a state route, the route, the section or straight line mileage starts at 0, 0.00 and then proceeds or increases as you travel either north um, or east on the state routes. Next, I want to cover um, the top right hand corner is what we call our project description. It's just a brief description of the project. Um, so with this one, Warren County 48, it's a replacement of an existing structure. And for those of you, I know many of you are real estate related, uh, just to be clear, I always try to make sure that we understand this. In construction plans, a structure is referring to a uh, bridge um, and not a building. In real estate terms, we call a structure, usually it refers to a building. So in this case, we're talking about a, a bridge over Clear Creek and the realignment of State Route 48. So we're doing a few things here in this project. Um, we're replacing a bridge. Uh, over a creek. Um, we are also realigning State Route 48, and we'll get to look at that a little bit later on. We get into the plan and profile sheets and the cross section sheets. Next, I want to cover is in the upper left hand corner, and it's just a um, location map and a scale, but the scale refers only to this location map, nowhere else in the set of plans. And the location map is really just kind of giving you an idea of where the project is relative to other state routes, county routes, and township routes in Warren County, kind of where's Waldo in Warren County. And we also give it what we call our begin project flag and our end project flag. So where the project begins is at station 1096 plus 20.01 and and also then at station 1114 and plus 88.51. So that's the location map, just give you a general idea where we're at. In the middle of our title sheets uh, is what we call the index of sheets. So it's all the different sheet types that we, we have in a set of construction plans. Obviously today I can't cover all of these, but I will be going obviously over the title sheet. I'll be covering a little bit on typical sections and a very small portion on general notes. We'll cover plan and profile sheets and cross-section sheets. Thursday is when I get into the right-of-way plan sheets, and we'll talk about those on, on Thursday. So hopefully you'll be coming back for our Thursday session. Um, in the Again, just under project description in the upper right-hand corner, we have what's called the specifications or what most people call the spec book. It just refers to what year of spec book the project engineer or project inspector is supposed to use to when they go to construction and build the project. Um, I know many of you that are on here, maybe there's some of you that are DBEs and, and this is more what you may be concerned with. I won't be covering this in detail, but I did want to point out um, this is a reference to the 2019 construction specification. Again, it's kind of the Bible to those in construction on how to build the project. Um, you can 
obviously you can purchase the book um, if you're a consultant or a DBE, um, here's a link to that, but it's also digital, it's available online as well. Um, so, and the link I've provided here at the bottom. Um, so with that, um, continuing on, I apologize if I'm going extremely fast, I just got a lot of material I gotta get through today, so um, I'll make sure we stay on time. With that, the bo very bottom is standard construction drawings. Um, think of a standard construction drawing. It, it's a drawing that has been created at a certain period in time, and it's it, it only changes when the industry standard changes. So rather than drawing it for drawing these standards each time we have a project, um, we draw them once, they get a date, and until that standard changes, we just reference it. And so for example, I'm gonna just highlight GR, which I've underlined down here in red, um, which is guardrail, GR for guardrail. Um, there are six different types of guardrail we're using in this project. And these are the standard construction drawings and it actually even gives you the dates. Now, obviously the dates are clear back in the 1990s. This project was built in the early 2000s. So it's a pretty old project, um, obviously nearly 20 years old, but it still tests the sta stands the test of time. It's We still do pretty much business the same way. Um, so as you can see, each one of these drawings has a date and it tells the construction contractor which standard construction drawing GR 1.2M, for example, and the date of that standard construction drawing there to utilize. So, and then the other one I highlighted is LA for landscaping. So we have a landscape plan um, as part of this project as well. And there's the date for that. Um, and here's the link that you can go to to pull up any of these drawings. Again, if I had time, I would show you many of them, but. Um, there are obviously several different types of standard construction drawings for this project. On the right hand side is what we call the title block. Now, the title block applies to each and every sheet throughout our set of plans. At the very bottom, which I've rotated this so you can read it, but at the very bottom is what we call the overall sheet numbering. Um, so this is sheet one of 101 and 101 would include the right of way sheets as well. Um, and then of course we have our county route and our section. If there was a railroad on this project, we would name the railroads that were involved, whether it was CRS, CSX, um, so on and so forth. The construction project number is not included in the title block because that doesn't come into play until we sell the project. So that comes on later on, but we do have to have a placeholder for that. And then our project identification, what we call the PID number. This number is assigned to a project before it's ever started. Um, so way back in the beginning. And then if there's any federal project, um, if there's any federal dollars in the project, there will be a federal project number that will be shown on the title sheet. It's the only place it's shown in the title block is on the title sheet. Um, the rest of our title blocks or the rest of our plan sheets, they will have the scale and the north arrow in this area of the title block. So that concludes the title block for construction plans. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move on to typical sections. And you can see at the top, I talk about sheet four. Um, and sheet four is actually just the before project typical sections. And that's why everything you'll see, all the lines here are dashed, um, but it's the before. And so I'll zoom in here real quick. Yeah, it just kind of shows you the existing paved lane width is 10, point, 10 feet, two inches, and the berm is two feet, six inches wide. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with what a, the view that I'm looking at, I will go over these in a little bit, but a typical section, think of it like a loaf of bread sitting on the counter. Um, each slice of bread is a typical section. The top of the, the crust of the bread would be the pavement for example, and everything underneath the top of the crust or the top of the loaf of bread is the pavement buildup. So the bread that you actually would be eating uh, in the middle. So with that being said, a typical section of a roadway is a graphical portrayal of how a cross-sectional view, which we'll go over those later, of that roadway would appear after construction is completed. So now we're gonna take a look at what a proposed typical section and just a section. So. I forgot I had these slides in here. If you're struggling to, to picture or have an idea what a typical section view is, here's 
a graphical picture. And if you're still struggling, I'm gonna make you hungry now. Here's a layered cake that will help you as well. Think of it as though the top, the, the frosting is the pavement and here's the pavement buildup um, throughout the, the typical section. So with that being said, we're gonna take a quick, we'll zoom in here on this typical section or some designers, engineers call it the normal section. And first thing you must do, and you're going to hear me say this throughout the presentation today and then on Thursday as well, okay. if you're new to reading plans, the first thing you have to identify is where the center line is because the entire project is built off of the center line. Um, in ODOT's um, per, um, plans, we try to have only one center line and we call it the center line of construction and right away. Um, I'll go over right away center lines um, Thursday, but know that we, there are times that we have two different center lines. They two serve two different purposes. Center line of construction is for the contractor to build the project. The center line of right away is how we acquire all the property. Um, and hopefully in most projects, they are one and the same. But you must identify the center line first because everything is very important to understand where that is at. We call this a normal section. Why do we call it normal section? Because, see these things I've highlighted right here, these are the slopes of the grade of the road, which means the high point or the crown of the road is right here in the middle at the center line. Um, the road slopes to the right and slopes to the left, and that's why we call it a normal section or a typical section, because everything is sloping from the center of the roadway. What it applies to underneath that, we've I've highlighted the station range. So along the center line, the this typical section, the one we're looking at right here, applies between stations 1110, 1103 plus 23 to 1105 or 188, 83 feet. And it applies between stations 1115, um, 28 to 1115, 98. Really, this typical section applies at the beginning of the project and at the end. Easiest way, another simple way, if you're familiar with reading plans, notice that the pavement width is 12 feet to 10 feet, two inches, meaning the proposed is 12 feet. The existing, if you remember our existing typical section, the old roadway or existing roadway is 10 feet, two inches. Our proposed is going to be 12 feet. So we have to taper it, begin the project at 10 foot, two inches and widen the roadway out to 12 feet throughout the project corridor. So here's the lane width of the project that's 12 foot on either side, 12 foot on the left, 12 foot on the right, and the berm or the shoulder width is four feet, proposed shoulder width is four feet on the left and four feet on the right. Taking a look to the left of the typical section here, which I've highlighted in red, we'll zoom in. <clears throat> so now we're looking at the ditch section of the road coming off of the pavement. Here's the center line. We have what's called the four slope, which is the slope going into the ditch. And it's what's considered a four to one. So it is for every four foot horizontally we go, we drop down one foot. And that's what's considered a four foot, four to one. On the other side of the ditch is what we call the back slope. It's the slope going into the ditch from the back side, and it is a two to one. So for every two feet horizontally, we're dropping down one foot vertically. And at the bottom, you have a four foot RNDG means rounding, four foot bottom round or two foot ditch bottom with a four foot rounding. Over here is the cross slope. So again, this is our slope of our pavement, our shoulder, and our, and our berm over here. Um, those are in decimal inches. I'm not going to get into that. That's for another class. Um, and then finally, um, when we don't have normal sections, we also have what's called super elevated sections. Um, what are super elevated sections? Super elevated sections are meaning the road all slopes to one side of the nut or the other. In this case, it all slopes to the left. And they're at this point or these station ranges. But ultimately what it means is, is we're going into a curve. Curve section of the roadway, we will super elevate. If we're turning to the left, the right side of the road is going to be elevated. So this side got elevated to match the left side. So the entire pavement slopes to the left. 
for two reasons. Drainage purposes is one, and the second purpose is, is so you as a driver, driving your vehicle can drive around the curve just a little little bit higher speed because it will the, the, the G-forces will help you stay on the road and not drive off the roadway. So there's a lot of different reasons why it's super elevated, but those are the simplistic reasons. And as you will see, the total pavement width, again, is 12 feet on each side for the proposed. It does vary from 11 foot, four inches. And that's where we actually go through, I believe it's the bridge part, bridge section of this roadway. But the in the open area, it's a 12 foot lane width on either side of the roadway. Lastly, on in the um, typical sections, one of the things we identify is what's called the profile view. And the reason I'm bringing this up because it ties into the plan and profile sheets, which we're gonna look at here in a little bit. So again, in our plan or typical sections, we identify what's called the profile grade. Think of it this way. Um, think of a rope laid down the center of the roadway. And obviously we break it up into stationings and I'm gonna go over stations here in a little bit. But also along that rope, we're identifying elevations, elevations above sea level. Um, so in this regard, we put the elevations that the surveyor pulls will be at the center line of the entire project corridor. That's why we say the profile grades at the center line. That's normal or typical on a two lane highway and a four lane um, interstate highway, for example, the profile grade line gets identified usually on a what we call a baseline or on the inside berm because the center line is down the median, which is a ditch bottom, and we're elevations, we want their critical points, so we want the elevations to be very accurate for usually identifying them on the pavement. So in this case, it's a two-lane divided highway. The profile grade line is identified at the center line of the roadway. And as you can see over here in the plan view, this would be, think of plan view as being in an airplane flying over the, the roadway, looking straight down on it. Again, center line and profile grade line. So this red line here represents the center line. Here's a station range for this project. And then what happens is, is when we get to the profile view, which we'll talk about a little bit later, that's where we're seeing elevations. That's where the elevations are utilized. Um, and again, I'll get into that a little bit later, but it's, this is where we designate where the profile grade line is. It's in the typical sections. So some other things, I've talked about the horizontal dimensions of the typical sections. Now I wanna talk about the vertical dimensions or what we call the pavement buildup. So there's a legend, usually it's on the first typical section if there are multiple sheets. And the, num the there's a balloon reference with the information that it, it, it is assigned to those balloons. So for example, balloon reference one is item 448. So this number right here ties to that spec book I talked about earlier at the title sheet. So it's an item 448, so the project inspector could go in there, or the contractor could go in there and look up more details about item 448. But in general, it's an inch and a quarter of asphalt concrete surface course. It's the top layer of the pavement that the contractor is going to put down. Item six, I'm not gonna go over all these, I don't have time to go over each and every one, but item six or balloon reference six, as you'll see this line actually just, uh, the balloon actually just points to a line, not a dark block. And that's because it's a liquid, it's a tack coat. It's an item 407 and, just, and obviously the contractor would go to the, see the general notes, but it's a liquid that they're gonna put between um, layers uh, one, and layer or layer two and layer three of the pavement buildup. And then the last item is what we call item number nine, 605. It's a four inch shallow pipe under drain. So I've highlighted it down here. This is a little pipe and we're looking at the end of the pipe. You're looking through an optical lens. That's the round part, that's the pipe, but it's below our asphalt, below the sub base pavement. Um, and it's to help drain the water from underneath the road, especially in Ohio. Um, we have freezing and thawing throughout the winter. The idea is, is the more water we can get out from underneath the roadway, the less apt we are to have freezing and thawing, which creates potholes. 
But I want you to remember this shallow pipe underdrain because we're going to see this again in our plan and profile sheets. Um, and I want to, I'll be talking about it and referencing it there. So the typical section shows you where the um, shallow pipe under drains are. And it would tell you, see, it says down here underneath here, station 1095 plus 10 to station 1095 plus 79. So that's where you would see the shallow pipe under drain. And then lastly, I didn't talk about this, but here again, the dash lines, the existing, um, there is some balloon references for that. And A, an existing surface treated asphalt pavement. So the existing roadway has six inches of average depth. Um, and they, they got these depths from the soil borings out there. So this is the pavement thickness out there in the existing. Um, in the after, we're going to have really end up having about three, four inches of asphalt over top of some bituminous aggregate and so on and so forth. So that is the existing Let's see if i've got everything i think so so right now i want to stop before i get into general notes i know i've covered quite a bit of material in the title sheet and the typical sections uh, victoria do we have any questions i probably have time to answer one or two questions um one question what is sta sta station I believe. Okay. I don't know what they're referencing, but I'm guessing stage, STA usually means station. Um, if I knew exactly where they were at, I would, where, what part of the plans, I'd probably, they may be different, but I'm going to just, the standard would be S, STA would be stationing. Okay. That's the only question we had so far. It awesome. was a technical question. Good, good. If it, Whoever asked that question, if it's if you can give me more of a description, I'll come back to it, or I can email you a response after the class. So if I didn't, there is a couple more that have come in here real quick. So I'll read one more off because I know you got to keep going. They asked if you could clarify again where profile grade lines are in the four-lane roads. Ah, in a four-lane divided highway, typically they are on the inside paved paved berm right along the edge of the pavement, paved lane on most of our projects. It can vary. It's one of those you definitely have to go to the typical sections um, and make sure you're paying attention because here's why. A lot of our interstates um, go from four lane divided highway with a grass median. Um, when you come into city of Columbus or Cleveland, those grass medians go away and then we have a, what's called a concrete barrier wall down the middle. So the the Profile grade may change the location, but in general, if you're talking about a rural setting, interstate, um, uh, or U.S. route, four-lane divided, it's usually on the inside berm of each of the four lanes. Um, keep that in mind. So let me give you an example. Um, so Interstate 70, east of Columbus, I know many of you probably aren't familiar with that area, but both the both of our paved lane or both of our freeway sections of the freeway the eastbound and the westbounds have different elevations at different points out east of columbus so the profile grade line is there's a profile grade line on the eastbound lane inside berm and there's a profile grade line on the westbound for two lanes on the inside berm so hopefully that addresses, I go in a little bit more depth on that, but hopefully that addresses their question. All okay. right. Thank you, Victoria. All right, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> moving on to the general notes, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here. Um, really what you need to know about the general notes is they are notes that are put together and placed and there's each project's gonna be a little bit different. Some things are the same. I'll show you one, a couple of them that are typically the same on all projects, but they're they're project specific and they're they're put in place because we can't graphically depict what we want the contractor to do in construction. There has to be more of an explanation. So, um, for example, the utility, the list of utilities, all of the utilities that are going to be potentially impacted as part of the project, we will always have a list of utilities in the general notes. That's a standard one. Most generally, the other note that I've highlighted here is, is the number of trees and stumps to be removed. Most projects will have some sort of um, st 
trees or stumps to be removed. And the reason we provide the size and the number of them is because obviously it's a lump sum payment, but it helps the contractor because the bid proposal is still gonna be a little bit different because it takes larger equipment to move larger trees and takes a little bit more effort. So we do break those out in sizes. Um, monumentation, that's survey related. So if we're setting monuments, we have a note for that. Um, here's a real true project specific, not to get into a lot of depth on this, but we have rock and or shale excavation. So it's telling the contractor between these two stations right here, 1101 plus zero zero and 1104 plus zero zero, we, through the soil borings, we found that there was some rock and or shale that was encountered and we need to remove that um, during construction. So as an additional depth of 18 inches below proposed subgrade shall be done. So it's telling the contractor, hey, we know we got this situation in this area, you need to do a little bit more additional work. So again, as they look at the project for bid proposals and to, to actually build the project. From a real estate perspective, one of the notes I want to point out, and this project didn't have any field tiles, but this one did have treated septic connections. So there's a lot of septics out there. Um, this is not inside the city. So each property owner has their own individual leach bed, leach field, septic system. Um, and it's telling the, the, the contractor, that, hey, there's treated septic flow may be discharged into the highway drainage system provided the owner has acquired an official permit from the Ohio Department of Transportation and basically the local authorities, which would be the health department in most cases. So, hey, this is how we're gonna treat those out there. Um, but again, as I mentioned, if you're dealing out in agricultural um, country, Gen we typically have what's called a field um, field tile note that we put in our plans. This project didn't have it. And then lastly, uh, catch basin. So this one, nothing special, it says catch basin number three. We'll have a standard drawing on that catch basin, but because it says as per plan, it's telling the construction of this standard catch basin number three shall be modified as per details, notes provided in sheet 59. So you got to go to sheet 59 and, and look up what is specific to the plan, this plan or this project for catch basin number three, something unique needs to be done. My best advice to anyone taking this course that's gonna be looking at plans is the general notes, provided you can get a copy of those, depending on how early on in the project development you are, because this the general notes are typically not done until, um, stage two, stage three of the plans. So if you're early on in the stage development, you're not gonna see these, but ultimately, if you can get a hold of these, per what I call peruse the general notes, look at the titles, all of these, it's hard to, to understand that on the, on the slides, but generally these are um, treated septic um, connections, there's titles to them all. And you'll wanna take a closer look and just kind of read through and figure out which ones would apply to the work that you're doing on the project. So with that, now we have what's called the knowledge check. So Victoria, I'll to let you take it over from here with the polling. Sounds good. I'm gonna put the first of our questions up. And it's, this project is a realignment of State Route 48 and the replacement of a bridge over Clear Creek. Is that true or false? And we are not gonna record how you answered. So please just pick an answer because I'd like for us to get at least 80% of you answering. So go with your gut. Go ahead and get your answer on there. And while they're answering, Brett, I'm going to read off another question for you. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, sheet nine, does the septic or drain tile need to be discussed in negotiations? So... All right, we're getting close to the 80%, so okay. I'm gonna go ahead and um, close this question down. Okay, then, yes, to answer her question, his or her question, yes, it would be, need to be discussed in negotiations, how we're handling it, how it's being, how we're, we're going to address it. Okay, and 88% of the audience chose true and 13% chose false. 
which actually comes up to 101 percent so that's kind of interesting <laughs> that's the, all right yeah, slide that so you tell us what the answer was ah so here's the question and the 88 percent are correct it is true it's a, if you go back to the project description it said uh is a, is a realignment of state route 48 and replacement of a bridge over clear creek so very good most of you got all it right. right awesome I'm going to launch the next one. And for anybody who found that they couldn't actually click to vote on the screen, it's because you're in full screen mode, hit escape, and that'll make it so you can choose an answer. Um, the next one is the proposed lane width for this project is 16 feet on each side. True or false? So we're checking here to see if you were paying attention. So while they're answering there, I don't have any other questions right this minute in the question box. Okay. Um, oh, it says when you say from station ABC to station XYZ, what does station reference? Is it a physical location? There's a question for you. That's a good question. It's a great question. Yes, it's a physical location, and I'm going to go over stationing um, here in a little bit along the center line. But yeah, it's a physical location along the project corridor. So I didn't get into it a lot earlier because I didn't have good reference, and I will definitely cover this, and hopefully it'll make more sense for the individual that asked the question. And if not, please, by all means, send me the question again. I will address it later. But when I get into plan profile sheets, I'll go over stationing. It should address her, hers or her question. Okay. And then the answers, as they selected them, 12% chose true, 88% chose false. So I'm going to hide that, and you can let us know what the actual answer is. So the proposed lane width of, for this project is 16 feet in each direction. The answer is false. The actual proposed lane width was 12 feet on either side with a four foot proposed berm. So the total pavement width would have been 16 feet on either side, a total of 32 feet of pavement, but the actual lane width is the key here. The lane paved lane width was 12 feet. So okay. 80, 80, All, yours. All right, thank you much. All right, so rolling on here, guys, real quick. I just wanna, um, this is gonna be very quick. I wanna, you to remember when we talk about plan view because we're in a plan view profile view and cross sections so a plan view is is like you are a bird flying over the road or you're in an airplane flying over looking straight down and in the plan view of any of our roadways we are going to show all above ground and below ground items so the plan view will have everything literally anything that we are aware of out in the project corridor um, through survey, through field work, through reaching out to the property owners or the business owners, um, utilities, we're going to show that in the plan view. So this is a plan view. When we talk about cross sections and typical sections, think of it like you took, again, a knife and cut a piece of bread and you took the bread as you're looking straight down on the loaf and you rotated it so you were looking at the end of the loaf straight on so this would be a cross section view the typical section is the same type of view the difference is and i'll get into this in more depth the cross section is going to show us cuts and fills and the work that's going to be done out there um, when it comes to excavation the typical section is going to show us the pavement build up the pa the lane width um so the horizontal and the vertical dimensions of all the detailed information for asphalt drainage items and things of that nature curbs um, catch basins the cross-section view it's the same view um, same cut of the roadway it's just the information is a little bit different the one you haven't seen thus far is what's called a profile view and i talked about in the typical sections and this project it's at the center line of the roadway here's the center line of the roadway so that's where the profile view is and basically very similar we're looking at a plan view we're going to slice the road right down the middle and think of it as though i'm going to rotate it so i'm going to look at everything from the asphalt the top of the asphalt under 
the asphalt. So from the ground below, um, think of it, I can't say look at it, think of it like um, you were standing in your front yard looking out at the roadway. Um, as the cars drive by, you could see all the ground underneath the roadway, all the utilities, like somebody cut the road down the middle. So this is the center line of the road right here. Let me do this, this might be easier. The center line of the road or the profile grade, so that's the, the top of the road, and then here's all the utilities under the, the roadway. Again, to be clear, we in the profile view, we do not show anything above ground, we show everything below ground in the profile view. That's really what the profiling for elevation. So if you're struggling with that, basically what we did was is we cut this car in half right down the middle of it. Think of this as the right-hand lane, the left-hand lane, and now the top of the car is the roadway surface, and now we're getting to see everything underneath the roadway. That's a profile view. So, let me do this. So here is a plan and profile sheet. <clears throat> um, the format can be different. Sometimes this, what we call sub summary is not on here. Um, but in this case it is, we have the plan view at the top half, the profile view, which is the vertical dimensions at the bottom half. And then over here on the right is what this called the sub summary. And it's all the quantities for this sheet that ultimately are carried to what we call the general summary, which I'm not going over. I will go over the sub summary just briefly, but plan view, profile view, and then the sub summary. Again, first thing you must do is you must identify the center line of construction, which I've highlighted here in red. That's the first thing. And then next we're gonna identify the stationing. So stationing, this is the first station, it's 149 plus 00. zero. And down below, in the profile view, we also have station 149 plus 00, zero. moving on, increasing what we call up station. So always going from left to right on our plan sheets. The next station is 1096 plus 00. zero. Now I don't have a lot of time to get into this, but ultimately we had what was called a station equation back here at the beginning of the project. This old stationing refers to an old project alignment this stationing refers to the current state of the roadway. Um, our stationing, basically what happens is take that straight line mileage I talked about earlier, the 21.05. And as many of you know, or should know, there's 5,280 feet in a mile. If you multiply the 21.05 by 5,280, you'll end up in the numbers that are showing up here in the stationing. This Straight line mileage converts to feet. So this is the number of feet we are from the South County line of Warren County. So we've went one, we've actually went 109,600 feet to this point is where we are from the South County line. So that's stationing in a nutshell. Um, and it is a point along the center line. But as you'll notice, we show the stationing in the plan view and then in the profile view and they line up. So ultimately what you see in the profile view or in the plan view up here then is rotated into the profile view down here. Station 1097 and then we have 1097 at the bottom. We have elevations on the left side. And I'll go over this in a minute and elevations on the right side. These are elevations above sea level. If you're not familiar, in Ohio, the lowest point is at the Ohio River. I believe it's like 455 feet above sea level. The highest point is actually two miles east of Bell Fountain, and I believe it's like 1,549 feet or 1,550 feet above sea level. In general, in Ohio, we're right, right around, usually around 800 feet um, in most places. So, 800 feet above sea level, and you'll see all of these reference that. Now, the key is, at the bottom is what we call existing elevations. There are existing elevations relative to each station and every 50 feet. So this is station 1096 plus 00. Let me do this real quick. It's 1096 plus 00. There's an elevation 50 feet from there, and then another elevation at 1097 plus 00. 
along the top is the proposed elevation and the, most of our engineers will call this out again at each station every 50 feet and any critical points so this is calling out the proposed elevation across the top and then as you can see in the plan view obviously you it looks like a flat road, but the reality of it is, is this roadway is going downhill from the beginning of the project. So it's the roadway sloping downhill. Now, it is exaggerated. Um, the only time we exaggerate our scales is in the profile view. Um, ultimately, um, we ex exaggerate it one to five. So for every foot horizontally we go, we're going one, one foot it's exaggerated by five times on the bottom so not to get into that this is again this is a, um i just don't have the time to get into how that all works if you have questions about it please let me know i'll be happy to answer them um we'll talk about a little bit more when i get into the profile i want to spend a few minutes here in the plan view so plan view again identify the center line of construction so we've highlighted that then identify the stationing Come along here, we identify each station mark. And then this is a bearing, which tells us that this portion of the center line is a tangent, AKA straight line. This point right here, TS, means tangent. So this is a tangent. S means spiral. So from this point forward, we're in a curved section. And this is important to understand that the roadway is straight for a period of time and then begins to curve to the left in this case. So this is the, the curve starts right here and it's a we call it a spiral curve. So I'm not going to read each of these. Obviously, you guys can read them. You have them in your PDF file, but ultimately I, it kind of explains what I've went over here typically. We show stationing at 100 foot intervals, but can be 50 depending on the, the project. The bearings are the angular measurements along the center line, horizontal curve information right and left. So something for you to reference back to um, um, it, in the future. The plan, continuing with the plan view, what I wanna talk about now is the next thing after you've identified the center line, identify where the existing pavement is. Where's the existing roadway, which I've highlighted in red. So that's where the old roadway was at or the before. And then here's where the new roadway is going to be. So you can see at the end of this sheet right here, we're starting to, the new roadway starting to curve to the right, pull away from the old alignment, the realignment of the roadway. This is another proposed feature right here that I'm pointing to. It's identifying E1, which we're going to find out what E1 is here in a moment. So don't get, if you're not familiar, that's okay. This is R2, it's a removal item, so what R stands for. So all these balloon items, balloon references to the sub-summary where you can find out more detailed information about it. But they're either a removal item or a proposal item and what we call a pay item. It's something we're gonna pay the contractor to either remove or install. Remember these three, because I'm gonna reference them in the sub-summary, E1, R2, a UD1. We also have or notes that specifically may explain in more detail items, um, balloon reference items. Here's one, a portion of an existing corrugated metal pipe, that's what CMP, to be removed, the cut end of the pipe to remain open for positive outflow. Um, so it's, there's additional notes on a lot of these items within the plan and profile sheet or in the plan view. So what the plan view is going to show is going to show you all the existing topo above ground, below ground, the disposition of each and every item, whether it's a removal or um, proposal item to be put in. If it's an existing linear feature, meaning a fence length, um, we're going to show that in a dashed line with the exception of buildings and symbols. Um, for those of you, I know there's a few that are out of state on this call. In ODOT, um, anything that's existing, um, for the most part, is shown with a dashed line. Anything that's proposed, again, in general, is going to be shown with a darker solid line. Um, and then the reference balloons and numbers will 
be carried to the sub summary. And again, I highlight E1, R1, R2, and UD1 because that's what I'm going to touch on real quick. So here's the sub summary. It's on the right hand side. We'll take a quick zoom into this. So I'm going to highlight E1. So if you don't know what balloon reference E1 is, you go to the sub summary. Where's the quantity? Ditch erosion protection. E represents the erosion. I don't know if you saw in the plan view, they had a deep DEP, which meant ditch erosion protection. There's 65 square yards on this plan sheet that will be installed as ditch erosion protection by the contractor. R2 is a removal item, and how do I know that? Because right here, if I go to where the quantity is, it says pipe removed, 24 inches and under. So it tells you the station range, and the same thing with the um, ditch erosion protection, it gives you the station ranges right here between stations 1097 plus 20 to 1098 plus 00. It's on the left side of the road, which if you remember, the erosion, ditch erosion was on the left side, left of the center line. And then R2 is on the right side between these two stations, and it's 32 feet of a pipe that's 24 inches and under that the contractor will need to remove. And then UD just so happens to be a four inch shallow pipe under drain, which if you recall, I said, remember this when we were looking at the typical sections. So this is a sh that four inch shallow pipe under drain in the typical sections that's gonna be installed on the left side of the roadway between these two stations right here, between station 1095 plus 10 and 1098 plus 00, there will be 289.99 feet. Obviously the total is down here of 290 feet, they rounded it up. That'll be carried to the general summary sheet. So that's kind of how the balloon references work in the sub summary and on the plan, plan view sheets. So now we're gonna jump into what we call the profile view. The profile view consists of elevations. Again, I'm gonna just re review this on the left and the right hand side. These are elevations above sea level. And down here on the bottom, we have the station 1097 to 1098. And what I want you to do is look at these. So if this is station 1097 plus 00, and that's station 1098 plus 00, do the math, that's 100 feet. There's one, two, three, four, five boxes. Divide 100 by five, it's 20 feet. So each one of these boxes represents 20 feet. So this is 1097 plus 20, 1097 plus 40, plus 60, plus 80, and now we're at 1098. But when we go over here to the elevations and we look at each one of these boxes, 855, 860, if you do the math, subtract 855 from 860, you get five feet. Down here, they represent 20 feet. Over here, they represent five feet. Again, we've exaggerated the vertical dimension so that we can see all these items of work that are going on underneath the roadway. Think of it like an accordion. If, if I didn't exaggerate this or pull the accordion apart, all these lines would just be on top of each other and it'd be very difficult for you to read. It's hard enough as it is without us exaggerating it. So keep that in mind in a profile view, everything's exaggerated in the vertical dimension. So continuing on, um, existing elevations down here on the bottom at each station and then the proposed elevations are along the top. So again, vertical dimension, something you can reference here, station and elevation. I'm just gonna scroll through this for the sake of time because I'm pushing an hour right now. Vertical curves, that's the one thing that we cannot show. We show horizontal curves in the plan view. We can't show the vertical because vertical is up and down. Horizontal is right and left. So we can show right and left curves in the plan view. We can only show vertical curves, which are up and down or hills, think of it that way, in the profile view. And then of course, drainage and utility items can be shown in the profile view. So quickly looking at, we have an existing ground, which is dashed line right here. The proposed is this solid line. I'll zoom in here in a second. And then we have what's called the shallow, four inch shallow pipe under drain. But notice down here in the profile view, I can't tell 
which side of the roadway that shallow pipe's on. It actually looks like it's straight underneath the middle of the road, but we know it's not. We know it's on the left side. A, it tells us left, but if we go to the plan view, you would see the UD1 shallow pipe under drain on the left side of the roadway. And there's that shallow pipe under drain. And then here's where we show vertical curves. PVI means point of vertical intersection. So if you want to make a note of that, point of vertical intersection. So this is telling us that the PVI is at 1096, which is right here, and then that the vertical curve is 160 feet. So from here, clear over to here is where this vertical curve. So it's at the kind of a, it's not at the bottom of a hill, but in this case, it is a slight curve that they've, vertical curve that they've placed in the roadway so that you don't feel a dip when you drive through it. And we have what's called where the two tangent lines intersect. That's what the PVI is. So I zoom in here. These two red lines represent the tangent lines and they intersect right here at this circle. The black line represents the actual roadway, which is the vertical curve. So it's, it's a curve. I know it's very slight. I know if you're new, this might be a little difficult to understand, but I did want to show you the difference um, between what a P, where the PVI is and, and it's two tangent lines, straight lines meeting right here, and then you have the vertical curve in black. Um, of course, then we talk about existing 12-inch water line. So here's the water line. It's, again, looks like it's, from the profile view, it looks like it's right underneath the center line, but we know it's to the right of the roadway, if you remember. Um, from our plan view. And then we have an existing 12-inch corrugated metal pipe, which is a drive pipe that's the pipe that's going to get removed, the R2 that we looked at. Here is the next the sheet 29 profile view. What I wanted to show here is kind of really illustrates the example of the exaggeration, number one, and number two, understanding that it appears as though this water line protrudes out of the ground. So here, this line here represents the existing ground. We're cutting through this hillside to put in the new roadway, because this is the proposed road right here. So it's gonna cut through this hillside, and it looks like the water line is gonna come out of the ground and go above the road. It's not. Here's the 12 inch water line. But when we go to look at our cross sections, for example, again, here's the center line of the roadway. Here's that roadway that's cutting through the hillside. And over here is the water line. So this, if we drew a straight line across, it is outside, it is above the road, but the water line is way off to the right of where the proposed roadway is going. But if I go back, to our profile, again, because we're, it's a snapshot of the roadway um, under the ground. So hopefully that helps you understand. Moving on to cross sections, we'll be wrapping up here in a few minutes. Please hang with me. Um, on the left side is what we call our the calculations for our seating, um, proposed seating for the roadway. Um, and then the total quantity, total for the seating is down here at the bottom. On the right-hand side is the earthwork, the cuts and fills. And I'll look at these a little bit closer here in a second. Just wanna illustrate the layout of the plan sheet. And the totals are carried down here to the bottom and then again carried to the general summary sheet. And then we have down along the bottom, you have the center line and then there's a distance right and left of the center line. Elevations, both on the right and left-hand side, their elevations are pertinent to each cross section. So as you can see, there's three cross sections right here. These elevations right here pertain to this cross section. These elevations pertain to this cross section. So most of our cross section seats are broken into, depending on where we're at in the state of Ohio and how flat it is or what the terrain is, you'll have anywhere between three to five cross sections per sheet. There are occasions down in southeastern Ohio, you might only have two of these um, on a sheet, but ultimately there's three of them. There's one, two, and three. Zooming in a little bit closer, again, here's the center line, zero, and you have state or offset left and right. Underneath each cross section, we give it the, the station call out. So 
this cross section is at station 1099 plus zero with the elevations again called out here on the right and on the left. And then just like in our profile view, the existing elevation is below, the proposed elevation is above. This elevation represents this point right here, this where the dotted line crosses the center line. This elevation represents where the proposed, the solid line crosses the center line. So if we were to look closer, the existing elevation is higher than the proposed. And then the seating totals again the seating for each cross section so what we do is on the very left side this column here this hundred represents the amount of feet so this is 40 feet this is 60 feet totaling 100 feet of seating needed at this cross section this number right here is the number that's calculated between the two cross sections so we have to identify how much we need at each cross section but then we have to calculate the area that's needed between the two cross sections. And that's actually the quantity that's carried to the general summary sheet. On the right-hand side then is the cuts and fills. And you'll notice we have 400, and I believe it's 96, give or take, of cut, but we have no fill. And that's because we're only cutting. There's no fill needed in this section. So this is a cut would have highlighted in yellow. That's why we only have uh, quantities for cut. Same thing though, this quantity gets added with the cut in the previous or the next cross section. We add them together, there's a mathematical formula to come up with the total amount of cut and fill that's then carried to the general summary sheet um, for the total project. And we also show on our cross sections the existing right of way width which kind of leads into Thursday's class, and then the proposed right-of-way width, and then here's a temporary right-of-way, and this temporary right-of-way is for the um, landscaping that's gonna be done on this project. We also show ditch bottom elevations. So these are the elevations of the bottom of the ditch and the direction of the flow. So you can see, if you look closely, this arrow is, well, the water's going in this direction, on this side of the cross section, but this flow arrow is pointing in this direction. So we've kind of, this is the peak of the project, um, the high point. All the water, the rest of the cross sections, all the water's flowing up station. And then of course we have our existing um, 12 inch water line. It's really the only utility out here um, on this project, fortunately. Uh, if we were in an urban setting, we have you know, water, sewer, um, probably cable, telephone, things of that nature. So, so here, just kind of summarizing the cross sections. Um, again, you guys can read this, kind of reviewing what I've done um, or explained. And with that, I'm going to go turn it over to Victoria for the knowledge check. And certainly if you guys have questions, I'll answer those as you guys are answering the knowledge check. And you know, Brett, actually, if, um, if you don't mind, since we're two minutes over, why don't we just you go ahead and give them the questions and the answers. Sure can, not a problem. Bonus for everybody. There you go. <laughs> all right, so with the exception of buildings, all existing linear features are to be shown with dashed lines, true or false? Da, 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 the answer is true. There are some exceptions, but in general, um, we do try to, all of our linear features, if it's existing or shown with a dashed line, um, and all of our proposed are shown with a solid. Question, the next one. Proposed and existing drainage features as well as utilities are shown in the cross-section sheets. So again, proposed and existing drainage features as well as utilities are shown in the cross-section sheets. True or false? True. That's the most one of the most important parts to sh in the cross-section sheets. So, did you have any questions, Victoria? You know, there were a couple questions, but I will send those to you and you can reach out to the people directly. And I want to thank everybody. I know we went a few minutes over, but it was great information, Brett, and we're looking forward to Thursday's session. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate yeah. it. Hopefully we'll talk to you guys on Thursday. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. See you. Bye.